So if you've been on your quote unquote fitness journey for any reasonable amount of time, you probably realize there are two main groups of people. Group number one, individuals who keep showing up consistently, working hard at it, gradually seeing progress, posting an occasional progress photo, and everything's going great. And there's also group two, individuals who also keep showing up consistently and also keep working hard, buying different programs, they're changing their calories, macros, tracking things, but they're not seeing results. And this group, no matter what they seem to be doing, they're not actually achieving that breakthrough moment where they get to that exceptional level. Now, the question you should be asking asking yourself is, how do I end up in group number one and avoid ending up in group number two? And that's exactly what I'm gonna answer in this video. I'm gonna share with you three main reasons why most people don't see results and never will see results until they fix these. And this is based on my experience. As a coach, I work with more than 600 clients at this point directly. I've seen a thing or two about success and failure over the last eight years, and I've also done this myself for 10 years. And I wanna go deep here with you in this video, and I promise you, if you implement the three things that I'm gonna talk about here, master them, you're going to see some phenomenal results, so let's dive into it. The first reason most people aren't seeing results is due to something I call the upside versus downside paradigm. And the way I see it, your success, your results on the fitness journey depend more on your ability to manage the downside rather than your ability to create more of an upside. In order for me to explain this correctly, we need to go outside of the world of fitness into the world of investing. And who's better to learn from there than one of the greatest of all time, Warren Buffett. And one of the things that Warren said that really stuck out to me when he said that rule number one is never lose money, rule number two is don't forget rule number one. And it's a well-known fact in the world of investing that what makes a great investor is their ability to protect themselves from losses, how they make decisions when things aren't going that well. For example, you invest a dollar and now you just lost 50 cents. And now you're forced to make 100% of a return on that last 50 cents to get back to a dollar, to just get back to where you previously were. It would have been a much better strategy if you lost less rather than having to be in a position where you have to make unrealistic returns, which is 100%. Now in fitness, a very common thing that happens is overeating on the weekends versus going harder on the weekdays. Sure, can you cut 100 calories or 200 calories on one of the weekdays or multiple weekdays? Yeah, but is that gonna, offset the 5,000 calorie binge on the weekends? No. So the leverage point of your progress actually isn't to make the good weekday better, it's actually to make the terrible weekend less terrible. So instead of overeating 5,000 calories, what if you overate only 1,000 or 500 calories? And from a training example, imagine someone who is training really, really hard with maximum intensity every single time they go to the gym, but they're also having periods of inconsistency, they're taking multiple weeks off or several months where they fall off track versus someone who is not training as hard but they're doing it consistently. Well, you can't compensate for those weeks that you're off even if you go extremely hard when you're on. It's just not gonna work out. So the person that's just going at it at a more steadier pace and they're doing it consistently will see way better results. So how can you apply the upside versus downside paradigm to your own journey? Well, look at your pitfalls, look at your challenges. Where do you fall off track? And instead of focusing all your effort on making what's good better, look at where you lose a lot. Are there situations where one bad meal turns into a whole day of overeating or that day turns into a whole weekend? Could there be a situation where you fall off track one workout and that ends up being two weeks off? If you fix those big losses and you lose less there, even if everything else stays the same, you're gonna see much more progress. So instead of just focusing on the upside, take a look at the downside, analyze it thoroughly, you're gonna definitely find some good stuff to fix there and you're gonna start seeing some great results. Now the second reason most people aren't seeing results is due to a factor I call the results attribution error. When I speak to beginners and intermediates and those who've done it for a while and they tell me, Mario, I'm stuck, I don't know what's wrong, I'm putting in the work, it is almost universally the case that this person has failed to master the fundamentals. It's not that they're not doing any of the fundamentals, but they suck at doing the fundamentals. And what are those fundamentals? Compound lifts, progressive overload, good workout technique, making sure they're training consistently, making sure they're on top of their calories and macros, eating a healthy diet, getting to bed on time, hitting the like button in my videos, making sure that they're actually following a plan with a goal in mind. 
Those are the things where 80, 90% of your effort, time, and energy should go into. When I look at the beginners and intermediates who are stuck, not getting results, is that they've deviated away from the fundamentals. They've gone into seeking gimmicks, secrets, looking for the bicep exercise angles, video after video. They're going broad instead of going deep. A master is someone who's never stopped doing the basics, someone who focused on those fundamentals to get really, really good at them. If I ask you, do you know progressive overload? Do you know tracking calories and macros? Maybe you will answer me yes to all those questions, but how good are you at those things? How consistently have you done it? How deeply do you understand the concept? Because there's different levels of understanding and maybe you're just at a very basic familiar level and that's not gonna be enough to achieve exceptional results. So you want to seek mastery instead of seeking familiarity. And this is where your effort should be focused on the fundamentals first, especially if you're a beginner intermediate, because that is going to deliver the most results that you can possibly get on your fitness journey. Now, the third reason why most people never see exceptional results is because they never make fitness a part of who they are. Let me ask you a question. How much time do you spend thinking about your fitness, your goals, your routine, redefining your process to get better results? Because there's one thing that I know to be true with those that have achieved amazing results. They're thinking about fitness. They're spending their free time learning about fitness. They're talking to other people about fitness. As Naval Ravikant said, to them it feels like fun, to others it looks like work. So they've made that switch from it being a chore and something they have to do to something that they really want to do. Compare that to someone who is doing it casually, who's dabbling around, who's being wishy-washy. They're not bothered to go out seek new information, to update their knowledge. They're not bothered to look for accountability. They don't bother to look for help and they're just basically stuck at the same place. And if you want exceptional results, you have a choice to make. You can stay casual and approach it from that perspective and be okay with getting those average results. Or you can really commit to that exceptional journey, which is gonna require that you make more space for fitness in your life. It will have to be a bit of a higher priority. I'm not saying it has to be a higher priority than your family or your business, but it has to be up there. It has to be something that you're thinking about it because then it's gonna be a part of your routine. It's going to become something you enjoy when you learn more about it. And that's really the way to get out of the whole discipline game is to make it a habit, to make it a part of your identity. And that takes time and that takes commitment and effort. And you will have to get there eventually if you care about exceptional results. There's nothing wrong with being casual, but there's a pretty big difference between that and achieving your fullest potential, which I really want for you. So think about this and how big of a part of your life is fitness right now and how can you find more space for it to really grow and become something meaningful to you. And what's gonna help you with that is making sure you hit that subscribe button below, making sure you enable notifications by hitting the bell icon as well. Details for coaching, if you wanna work with me are in the description below, check that out as well. I'm gonna leave it here at the end, it's really important. So check out that video and I'm gonna see you right there.